Hey party people, Techno back again with another lock video in this lock, or in this video rather. We are taking a look at the ACE model 54541. This is a 38 millimeter brass bodied padlock, dual spring loaded locking paws on this. And as we see here, we also have a five pin core, which is quite nice. So this is of course in continuation of the series started with the Master Lock 140. Uh, we reviewed all of the potential flaws that could be exploited in the design of that lock. And then in these lower security applications, kind of pose the question, are there better alternatives out there? There are, um, and that's what we're exploring here. So we looked at the Abyss prior to this, and then we also looked at another ACE padlock prior to this that was much smaller in size, but like those previous locks, shared a four pin core. Now in this particular ACE model, we are we have a lock that is similar in size to the Master Lock 140 and the Abyss that we took a look at. However, we're stepping up to a five pin core, which is certainly a nice addition on that. Here's the key. We can see that this one has pretty nice bidding overall. And if we pop that lock open, you can see those dual spring loaded locking paws. So these can in fact be shimmed. Be aware of that. The primary weakness I think in this particular lock, uh, ruling out physical destruction of course, is the fact that you can shim these. It is a tight fit, but it is doable. However, this was all kind of spurred by uh, primarily the weakness in the core of the Master Lock 140, primarily the fact that it is susceptible to an overlift attack using a comb pick. The Abyss unfortunately was as well, though it was a little bit more finicky to work that comb pick into place to get that uh, done. The smaller Ace padlock was not, and in fact, this one is not either. So let's just go ahead and get that out of the way. You can shim it, not susceptible to comb pick, um, or an overlift attack rather with a comb pick, but and that pretty much leaves us with the core. So let's see how the core withstands a picking attack. So to do that, I'm gonna use a top of the keyway tensioner, and I'm also going to use my Sparrow's Tron pick. I tend to pretty much go to this pick first for any lock, especially any lock with a keyway that can accommodate a, a 25 thousandths size pick. And let's go ahead and get started. You can see that there's a little bit of give in the core already, not too much, but there is. And there is nothing on pin one, nothing on two, nothing on three, nothing on four. Five is binding. Little click out of pin five. Back up the stack, nothing on four, nothing on three. Subtle click out of two. And one is dragging a little bit. So let's go back to the back. Uh, nothing on five, nothing on four, nothing on three. Nothing, a little subtle click out of two again. I take that back. And one, you can tell that one is close to binding, but it doesn't quite want to go there. Click out of five, nothing on four, nothing on three as of yet, nothing on two, click out of five, nothing on four, nothing on three, click out of two. Five was crunchy that time, nothing on four, Nothing on three, click out of two, and still continuing to slightly bind a little bit more on one, but not quite there. That was a click out of five, nothing on four, nothing on three, click out of two. Now we got to click on one. So it kind of seems like we're working with some ser serrated pins here and just kind of slowly walking everything into place. All right, so let's see what's next. It was a click out of one, but that might still, yeah, it's falling back down. So we're not quite in the position where that one is going to want to stay. And I'm not getting a whole lot on the others. Although I might have to release some tension here. One thing that I tend to do as I pick a lock, it's a, a subconscious thing, is I increasingly bear down on the tension if I'm not paying attention. And that can sometimes lead to some not so great results. So that time we had a click out of five, three, and two and five and two again, and two. And there I touched five and we went into a false set. All right, pin three, we have counter rotation. And 
and that is set now but of course we kind of dropped everything else so now we have to play that game of working those serrated pins back up so click out of five click out of three nothing on two five nothing on four nothing on three nothing on two one is dragging pick uh, click on five little click on three there and just kind of continues down that so five uh, click out of four that time and three so i think it's safe to say that five and two seem to be serrated and there i touched four and we went into a false set again nothing on five nothing on four nothing on three nothing on two counter rotation on one And there we have an open. Overall, pretty impressive core on these ace padlocks. Definitely great locks to pick up if you want to practice with security pins, spools, and serrated pins. Also American locks, and there are plenty of locks out there to work with security pins, but these are a pretty challenging pick, I would say, uh, at least for my skill level. Um, of course, we can't gut this and see what's inside based on sort of how this behaved my guess would be that one was a spool two was serrated three was a spool four when it clicked into place there was only one click it didn't travel too far uh so it's kind of hard to say it could be serrated that just might not be coming into play because the pin stack is so long and then five following the pattern that would mean that five is a spool um although it certainly kind of behaved perhaps more like a, a serrated pin but Hard to say, that could just be again because of the bidding and the positioning in there. All of, all in, all the, uh, all in all, really a uh, pretty awesome performance out of a core uh, for a lock like this. That being said, um, we still have the, the issue of potentially shimming that shackle, although that's not going to be something that can be done nearly as surreptitiously as the comb pick and overlift attack. So that is the ace and we will kind of wrap up this mini series with one more lock that sits a little bit outside of the uh, vague specifications of brass bodied padlock that we've had. It is not a brass bodied padlock, but it is one that I think is probably the best solution to the challenge of finding a good low security lock, especially for things like if you need a lock for your gym locker, for example. And in that next video, we will definitely be taking a look at that. But until then, I thank you very much for watching, everybody. I do truly appreciate it. Take care. I will catch you later.